Hello everybody, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Hydra Sam and I make waifu over meta content and in today's video, I want to go over and explain to you all my Mona and Huta Vaporize team as well as different combos I use and what stats I go for on my waifus. I know you all have seen Shinkyu paired up with Huta a lot for Vaporize but I really don't care about that femboy and in my opinion Mona adds more value with just a different playstyle. Now if you don't have Huta, you can maybe pull off some of these combos and rotations with Diluc but since I don't have that husbando I will not be able to tell you for sure. Before we get started, I want to ask you all, if you enjoy the content, please like and consider subscribing. Only a certain percentage of you watching are actually subbed to my YouTube channel. And remember, you can always unsubscribe whenever you want. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now for this team, it's centered around Hutel and Mona. Mona would be the sub DPS role and Hutel would be the main DPS role. Before I get into the artifacts, remember, I just want to point out to you that it's always about substats first over set bonuses. Now for my current build, I have a two-piece gladiator and two-piece noblesse. And yes, in a perfect world, I would replace the gladiator with a two-piece heart of death. But the main thing I want to focus around is my stats. I want to get a perfect balance of elemental mastery, crit rate, crit damage, and hydro damage bonus. With my current build, this is the best crit rate I can get. But for sure, I'd rather be comfortable with at least 50%. Here's my flower, here's my feather. The sense piece that I go for is Elemental Mastery because of the good subsets that I have for the piece. If you don't have a good Elemental Mastery piece, a good attack percent piece will do almost the same job. And trust me, I've tested it. I've already done a video comparing the three sense piece in case you haven't done it. You can check it out, link in the description below. For the goblet, I go for Hydro Damage Bonus. And in this case, I have a Crit Damage Circlet because of the crit rate that I have as a substat. The open I have is Scoured Alice, which in my opinion is probably the best weapon to put on Mona, but because Skyward Alice has an attack percent substat, it pressures you a lot to go for crit damage or crit rate in your artifacts. So with my crit damage circlet, it has pressured me to go for crit rate on my substats, which is here, here, and here as well. But maybe you have insane crit damage stats on your artifacts and you can put a crit rate circlet on your Mona. Also, if you're trying to decide what artifact set bonuses to go for, some good ones are the Wanderer's Troop for the extra elemental mastery that you get. Of course, the two-piece Hydra set if you can get good subsets for it, Noblesse and Gladiator. These artifact sets will contribute to Mona's vaporized damage. Now, if you don't have the Scoured Atlas, some good alternatives are, of course, the Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds, the Map of Mare, the Wit Sith, if you have the new weapon, Wine and Song is also good, and the Solar Pro. But remember, like I told you, at the end of the day, it's all about balancing the stats you have on your character. So whatever weapon you choose, just think of it as a six artifact, and that's what you're going to have to use in order to balance out your stats of Elemental Mastery, Crit Rate, Crit Damage, and Hydro Damage Bonus. And of course, one number to pay attention to and never forget is your base attack, because this is the first number that is considered in your damage formula. For Hutao, I have the Staff of Homa. A really good alternative for Staff of Homa is a Dragon's Bane, especially because this is a vaporized center team. But if you have the Deathmatch or even the Black Cliff, that's fine too. And also the Lithic Spear as well, if you have that by any chance. For my Hutao, I'm running a four piece Crimson Witch set. But because it's a nightmare to get good artifacts on a set, a two-piece Crimson and a two-piece Noblesse is fine as well. Or even a two-piece Crimson and a two-piece Gladiator is also fine. Here's my Flower, my Feather. And the Sands piece that I use on Hutao is Elemental Mastery because of the insane substats that I have for this piece. Power Damage Bonus as my Goblet and a Crit Rate Circlet on Hutao because I do not have her C6. She's only C2. Here are my Talents. I forgot to show my Mona talents here there as well, and I also have C2 Mona. My two favorite characters I like to pair up with these two is Bennett for the healing and support and the damage boost that he gives for us. His main role is just to heal, so all his artifacts are mainly revolved around health and HP percentage and healing bonus. And because I have the Summer Shaper, this is my best 5-star weapon. The sense piece I go is for energy recharge to make up for that. If not, Festering Desire is fine. For Sucrose, all she's there for is the Viridescent Resistant Reduction. And I have a Thrilling Trails of Dragon Slayers for her to support Mona or Hutao depending on who I'm switching to. It's pretty minimal, just try to stack Elemental Mastery on her so we can take advantage of her talents. You don't need Bennett or Sucrose, those are just my favorite. Other alternatives would be whoever you want. I would suggest another Pyro just to get the damage boost. But if you have another healer, maybe like a Jean. Or instead of Bennett, you want to put like a Xinyan, that's fine too. 
Or honestly, whichever waifus you want. I'm not telling you this is what you need to do. It's honestly whoever you have fun, whoever fits your playstyle to complement these two. So now I'm going to show you some of the combos and some of the rotations that I like to use with Mona and Hutao. So let's get into it. So Mona's elemental skill is a great way to start off this combo. And if you time it correctly, after you do a charge attack with Hutao, you let the Hydro reapply. So that way you can get some nice vaporized damage. Because if you try to go too fast, then you end up causing the vaporize with Mona's elemental skill rather than Hutao's charge attack and normal attack. Also, be careful with enemies that do not have a lot of stagger resistance because if you go too ham on them, you're going to toss them all around and it won't apply the Hydro from Mona's elemental skill. Also, if you want to be a little fancy, you can actually time your charge attack to do Vaporize at the same time as your Blood Blossom. I don't really recommend this, but, but because I have C2, it allows me to do a lot of Vaporize damage with my Blood Blossom damage. One thing I like to do with Mona at the end of Hu Tao's elemental skill is to hit the enemies with a charge attack. And if it hits a critical hit, it should be a big one. Now, a big thing you got to understand if you don't know already is depending on, on whose elemental burst you trigger first is whose elemental mastery gets triggered. If you start with Mona's elemental burst, you're applying the hydro element and if you finish it off with Hu Tao's elemental burst. Hu Tao is going to cause the vaporize, thus using her elemental mastery for the vaporize damage. And vice versa, if you trigger vaporize with Mona's elemental elemental burst and then you hit it with a fire attack you're gonna trigger mona's elemental mastery rather than hu tao's now in case you haven't seen one of my previous videos we did discover that hu tao's blood blossom allows us to pop mona's vaporize with attacks that are not pyro this is useful for rotations and to start off combos now if you get familiar with these combos and learn the rotations and the timing these next clips are just some of the things that you can do in spiral abyss or in the open world depending on your team comp and also depending if you use bennett or sucrose in the mix uh, <laughs> みんなが みんなが<笑> みんなは俺が守る。運命よ。ここにいてよ。Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I just want to remind you that if you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. By the way, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. You guys are crazy. Be sure to join our Discord link in the description so that way you can have a chance at future giveaways. And since we reached 5,000 subscribers, we are doing a little battle pass giveaway. So don't miss out on that. I might have missed something. You can always ask me in the comments. I try to answer as many comments as I can. I love you all. Remember, waifu over meta. And we'll see you in the next video.